So guys, here I am, ready for chapter 4. Sorry I haven't been, um... Yeah, stuff's been happening. Last weekend was actually really crazy. Because, like, a lot of... Uh, oh yeah, last weekend... Oh wait, no, I came out with a video. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Last weekend... Um, I forget what what happened that I was missing. Hold up, let me... Anyway, um, oh yeah, we had, we just had a lot of stuff going on, um, so I couldn't do it, I'm sorry that I couldn't, um, so yeah, but here I am. So my, um, like, book that I am suggesting is, let me think. Um, actually, I'm suggesting, this is probably something you want to read, like, as an older, you know, because it's definitely more on the, um, a older adult, adult, um, but it's, um, <coughs> Tom Clancy. I'm actually recommending an author. He's really good. So, yeah. Okay, so, <coughs> let me clear my throat so I, you can hear me. Okay, yeah, you can hear me. I'm just looking at my voice thing that tells me if I'm recording. Okay, so, chapter four. With Bastion with behind her, Zara ducked into the cramped utility room where she and the other cleaning girls stowed their belongings. She heaved a sigh when she shut the door behind her. I wonder why she's so scared of Bastion. The cadets wouldn't follow her here, even if their cackling still roared in her ears. Two of the other cleaning girls chattered in the dark inside the dark space, readying their carts with rags and bottles of bleach. Zara glanced at them, but they ignored her like always. A slow ache wove through her heart, and she wished that Molly were here. It would have been nice to have someone to talk to, especially after her run-in with Bastion. What exactly did he want to talk about? You're late, one of the girls sniffed at Zara. I had to pick up the dormitory sheets for you. Zara reached for a pile of rags from the metal table. Thanks, it won't happen again. Make sure it doesn't. The girls pushed their carts out the door, leaving Zara alone in the in the mill in the mildewed room. That's weird. Mildewed. That's a weird word. <clears throat> she twisted the rags in her hands until her knuckles hurt. Decades may have passed since the war, but most Eastern Americans still shook, shook their heads at Zara's lineage. They had never forgotten and had never forget forgiven the cruelty of the Japanese had dealt had dealt during and after the war. The attack on Pearl Harbor, the internment camps for captured rebels, the death marches along the American West Coast. Even today, the Empire of Japan ruled Western, ter Western American territories as the Nazis ruled the East, with a harsh and oppressive fist. That's why Kleinborn shunned Zara just as they had her mother, once they learned she had given birth to a half-Japanese child. It made Zara's blood boil when she overheard farmers warning their daughters not to become like Annie St. James. Her mother had been a lonely 18-year-old when she met a young Japanese soldier while cleaning the cafeteria at Fort Goring. Goring, I don't know. Annie's own mother was sick with tuberculosis, and her father had recently been jailed, leaving her and her brother, Redmond, to care for the farm. With so many burdens pressing in on her, Annie had lost herself in the fling, but she broke it off after her brother discovered it. But by then, she was already pregnant. Shaking off the memories of her mother, Zara spent the next six hours in a blur of dull shores, while the cadets scaled ropes outside and debated Mein Kampf, which means my struggle was by Hitler, by the way, in the classroom. She washed the bedsheets and scrubbed the cooking pots. Most of the students lived at the academy full-time, arriving at age 12 and graduating at 20. Their application process had been rigorous, and their coursework was even more so. Mathematics, war strategy, racial, racial sciences, along with shooting, first aid, and heavy combat training. About a dozen cadets dropped out every term, but Zara was never sorry to see them go. Fewer sheets for her to wash, at least till next semester. But, er, but er, by early afternoon, Zara's uniform smelled of dish soap and old soup, but there was nothing she could do about it. She had to fold the tablecloth and organize the storage closet for Froschwoman, one of the history teachers. Tucking off her apron, she dashed into Froschwoman's classroom, dart, darted around the desk, and squeezed into the dimly lit closet as the cadets assembled to their seats. Ambled. 
corner, that means. She was about to reach for the filing cabinet when another cleaning girl hurried inside. Good God, what a mess, the girl, the dark-haired girl whispered. She wedged her nearly six-foot height into the space. When's the last time Frost Sherman, Sherman cleaned the, out this thing? You'd think she... Her voice stopped when Zara turned around. Oh, I thought Lizzie would be here. Sarah swallowed her groan. Hello to you, too. The girl didn't return the greeting. Instead, she tackled a pile of papers on the floor, pretending she was the only one there. Zara inked open the file, the file drawer. Her fingers dredged in dust. Yuck. She'd hoped for a quiet afternoon, but now, but now she would have to share this musty closet with Christy Coulter, of all people. Most of the cleaning girls simply ignored Zara, which wasn't so bad after she'd gotten used to it. But Christy could be cruel. The bell changed, and the stale silence filled the storage room, only broken by the sound of shuffling papers and the sharpness of Frostrum's voice. Zara, Zara tried to tune out the lecture, but the words drilled into her eardrums anyway. Quiet, please, Frostrum said in German. She was a petite woman, only five two, but she processed. <coughs> The, the voice of a general. Farleen Huber, sit down. Her dresser, open a few windows. It's too warm in here. Now then, let's get started on your history reports. Her Zimmerman, I believe you volunteered to go first. The reports ticked by in a parade of Nazi pride. Her Zimmerman spent ten minutes lauding the anomaly war hero Luke Anzel, or the Jew of the Third Reich, as he was known who destroyed eight American cities with his ability to create mile-wide mile explosions. His contribution slaughtered millions and eventually led to President Roosevelt's surrender. But Ansel only lived three years beyond the next, the Nazis' victory. Unstable genes, the autopsy found. <coughs> okay, I'm still, okay, sorry. Right, finally, Herbert ne went next. Detailing the life of Führer Gustav, the son and heir of Adolf Hitler, he reorganized North Africa into colonial states and nearly roared with the Soviets over the Lithuanian border. After that, Herr Dresner described the history of the Corps of Four. Corps of Four. Corps of Four. The Corps of Four. Sorry, I struggle with the word Corps. From the first, from the very first dual anomalies to the current Corps, who had to date saved the few. Fewer her Dieter from five assassination attempts. When her and Dresner finished, Frosch Sherman studied her role and nodded at Bastion. Her Eckert? We have time for one more presentation. From her vantage point in the storage closet, Zara peeked into the classroom and saw Bastion heading towards the teacher's desk. His head bowed. A couple of female cadets sent each other sl sly smiles, obviously pleased at the prospect of gazing at Bastion for his entire report. There's only a small number of female cadets at the academy. Many girls their age joined the, joined the League of German Maidens, where they prepared for their roles in Nazi society. Wife, mother, homemaker. But it was, more, but it was getting more common to see German women in the military or finding work within offices and factory management. Dr. Eva Himmel, Eva Himmel was born in 1910 in Dresden, Germany, said Bastian in a quiet voice which wasn't very fitting for a colonel's son. With an IQ of 174, he was 174. He was destined for great things. She was she received her doctorate doctorate in genetics at the age of 20. Wow, that is really young. For those of you who don't know, that's like incredibly young. Right, where was I? She received her doctorate in genetics at the age of 20 and became the first female scientist to work in the Fuhrholz National Laboratory. There is Scout. Laboratory? It's more like a torture chamber. The Nazis may have prided themselves in creating anomalies, but their discovery were, were, was paid for in blood. Thousands of test subjects, mainly Jews, had been subjected to the exper experimentation. Some were even children. What was worse, what was worse, the German history books had reveled and the, these deaths. Lionizing Adolf Hitler for rip, ridding the world of the great Jewish filth. Which is really bad, because I have a friend that's Jewish, and he's, like, really nice and everything. 
Bastian's gaze, Bastian's gaze remained glued to the pages of his report, never looking up once. Dr. Himmel proved instrumental in the Dresden study, specifically in the engineering of Subject K-3, the very first anomaly soldier who survived the testing process. Then, after the war ended, Dr. Himmel worked for years trying to solve the anomaly genetic instability that had led to the early deaths of over 50% of the division. Continuing on, Bastian described the good doctor's battle with cancer. But Zara had tuned out his report and returned to organizing the file in her hand. She, married, she barely made a dent in the pile today, which meant she would have to stay late to finish the job. On top of that, Uncle Red needed her to help with the planting once she got home. She'd be lucky to go to bed before midnight. Heaving a tired sigh, she reached behind her for her trash for the trash back basket. But her hand knocked into Christie's stack of alphabetized files, sending papers toppling. I spent forty minutes on that, Christy hissed. I didn't mean to Christy wasn't finished. Stupid Connie. Which is not a nice thing to say. Like at all. Zara flinched before a flare of anger ignited inside her. She had heard that slur often enough. A short, nice version of kamikaze. She should have gotten used to it by now, but it was always punched. It always punched a hole in her heart. Stupid Kami. She tried to shrug it off, but it ran. But it rang inside her head. Kami. Zara hated that word, and she hated that Christy had used it. For years, Christy had simply snubbed Zara like the rest of the cleaning girls. But then, when her father had gone to the Western American territories to find work at a lumber mill, he made, only made it a few months before his Japanese. A ploy employer hanged him for attending a few freedom resistance meetings. The rebel movement out west. Not long after that, Zara arrived at school to find her apron in the toilet and her cleaning cart knocked onto its side. That was when the name calling started too. Zara crushed a piece of paper in her hands. She, she had never even met, met Mr. Cutler, but Christie somehow blamed her for his death. Months of resentment rushed through her in a wave and her face grew oven hot. She forced herself to breathe. In and out. In and out. She would not she wouldn't have an episode. Not here. Suddenly a gust of wind flew through the classroom windows, snatching papers from desks and spoiling them along the ceiling. The cadets laughed, but Frost Shimon clucked at them. Settle down, class isn't over. Remember to read chapters ten through twelve as your homework assignment tonight. As your homework assignment. Once the be final bell chimed for the day, Zara leapt to her feet, ready to escape from the dusty room. She hurried to Frost Schumann's desk and asked for a restroom break. Make it a quick one, Frost Schumann said, but Zara didn't hear her. Running to, into the hall, she wedged herself through the mass of uniforms and hurried to the nearest place where she could be alone, the broom closet. She shut the door and gulped down a breath, but the tears came anyway. She swiped at her eyes. She didn't know why she was crying. Christy had called her a commie dozens of times before. But maybe the last few days had been too much for her. First Sentinel Atkins' visit, then the beating, now this. Sometimes she wanted to stand in the middle of, of the square and scream at everyone who had hurt her or her family. But if she did that, she would end up like poor Mr. Carey. A minute ticked by, and Zara tried to pull herself together. If she didn't go back to work, her pay would get docked, and she needed the mo that money for the farm. Besides, she couldn't let Christy get under her skin. The anger flared again, but Zara used it to make the tears stop. She took a deep breath. Three knocks tacked against the door. Zara jumped back. I'm on break! A pause. Farlene St. James? She froze. She knew that voice. Although it was strange to hear him address her so formally, most cadets were referred to her as Hosmistrine. I don't know how to say it. Some simply called her girl. I need to speak with you for a moment. Zara's nails dug into her palms. She only wanted a minute to herself, but the Nazis wouldn't even allow wouldn't allow even that. She sighed and twisted the doorknob to find Bastian standing in the empty hallway, his warm ochre eyes peeling into her dark ones. Out of habit, her gaze dropped to the tiled floor and fixed upon his leather shoes. The toes of his lo loafers were a little scuffed. Perhaps he wanted her to shine them for her. For him. After the day she had she had had it's weird, she wouldn't have been surprised. His held tilted to one side. Are you ill, Folly? I'm fine, her Eckhart she forced out. Do you need my assistance? Frost Schumann wanted a quick word with you once your break is finished. So I ran out before she could tell you herself. 
So I told her I relayed the message. As he spoke, a set of dimples emerged at the corner of his mouth. Undoubtedly, those dimples sent the Nazi's girl, the Nazi girls, sighing. But Zara never understood the appeal of them. Thank you for letting me know. Frankly, she was surprised that Bastian was delivering the message instead of another cleaning girl. But she urged her lips into a smile, knowing that she had to act extra polite around the colonel's son. My deepest, my deepest consolation is about your great uncle. Those dimples slid away. My great uncle. He, um, I heard he had passed away. Ah, you must mean my. He clutches. He clutched the dog tags around his neck. My opa. My apolog. My apologies. I didn't realize. Zara grimaced at the mistake. Bastian had lost his grandfather, not a great uncle. She waited for him to huff and storm off, but he didn't move. I mentioned that I needed to speak with you earlier. Zara stiffened. There were only a few things that a Nazi would want from a cleaning girl like her, and she didn't like any of those reasons. Her mind frantically searched for an excuse to put him off, but she came up empty. Zara's long, Bastian's long fingers dropped the dog tag and fidgeted instead, with his red and yellow stri striped tie the academy colors. My mother is searching for a new housekeeper. Our previous one left quite suddenly. Zara sighed, relieved. He wasn't offering reshmarks for a certain services from her. She knew what he was asking before he even said it. My mother needs someone to fill in while we search for a permanent replacement. I told her I, told her I could speak to a hospital at school, so I thought I would ask you. You seem, he played with his tie again, clearly uncomfortable with this conversation. You seem very skilled. Very skilled. Zero wondered if she was supposed to take that as a compliment, but it only reminded her of how these Germans viewed her, a work mule to service their needs. It was humiliating enough to scrub the Nazis' bathroom e bathrooms every day, but now she had been asked to personally clean Colonel Eckhart's toilet too? It's only an hour to a day, Bastien said. We'd compensate you, of course. Twenty reach marks an hour, per hour. The account made Zara suck in her breath. She made only half of that at the academy, and she had grudge she had to grudgingly admit that she could put that put that money to good use at home. The stove was broken and the water hotter, and the water heater needed to be replaced. She missed her hot showers dreadfully. But twenty reach marks per hour was was frankly too much. Even the most experienced hospital didn't make that make, didn't make that. Zara gripped the edge of the door frame uneasiness sliding through her. And why was Bastian looking for a new housekeeper when his father's staff could have made the request? This task seemed rather beneath a cadet like him. Maybe you could stop by my house. We could walk together if you don't know the way, he offered. Now that was even more baffling. A colonel's son would never be seen walking home with a cleaning girl. It won't take long, Bastian went on. His eyes grasped onto her, and she saw the golden green flecks inside them, like a mosaic. If he wasn't German... She might have thought them pretty. Looking away from those eyes, Zara wondered what she should do. She couldn't refuse him, of course, but she couldn't shake the niggling feeling that somehow this conver about this conversation was off, that he wasn't telling her the entire truth. She thought about all of those times she had caught him glancing at her. Why? But the thought of 20 reach marks an hour was enough to put her question to side. I have work tonight, but maybe tomorrow? I see. He chewed the, his bottom lip, disappointed threading through his voice. I have practice until four. How about then? She nodded. I have track practice until four. How about then? She nodded. Tomorrow at four. A smile flooded his lips, but it but it vanished so quickly that Zara wondered if she had imagined it. Good day. Zara headed back to the history classroom, but halfway there she glanced backward to find Bastian standing outside the broom closet, watching her leave. That prickling feeling tick tickled at the nape of her neck. She sped past the walkers. She had no idea to, what to make of her day, and she had no idea what to make of Bastian Eckhart. So that was chapter four, and chapter five should be coming out next week, because I think that now that um, I've ha I'm doing a lot of review and everything, I'm, I'll be next week I may not be able to get anything out, so it may be another two-week thing. But, um, yeah, so, I am looking, I really am trying to figure out how to game, how to get you guys some gaming videos, like, it's just, it's kind of hard to find, 
something that I can record, because, I mean, I'm actually really good at, um, what's it called? Oh, I can't think of it now. Roblox. Yeah. And I also love Bed Wars. Like, I just love, like, that's all I play now. I don't even play Roblox. Well, I sometimes play Roblox, but I just play Bed Wars, Bed Wars, Bed Wars, Bed Wars every day. So, yeah. So, what else? Right. So, that is about it. Um, anything else? No. Okay, so, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! No, I don't do that thing that Stampy does, if any of you watch Stampy. Anyway, see you in the next video, and peace out.